Hello, I'm Ann Elliott. I'm from the California Native Plant Society, Mount Lassen Chapter. And today, I am visiting Katie and Jim Bishop's house, east of Oroville, um, in the foothills, in the, in the orange belt, as they call it. So, a beautiful carpinteria bush they have here with lots of pollinators. And I'm going to go down to this beautiful entryway and say hi to Jim and Katie. Hello, Katie. Hello, Jim. Hi. hi there. Thank you so much for letting me come and video your garden. You're welcome. We, I saw all these beautiful flowers last night at the meeting, and I knew that I just had to come. So, show me some of your favorites. Right here. Oh. We have the clematis, the foothill clematis. It's our local native. This is just the seed head. It flowered earlier in the spring, but I think this is more spectacular than oh, the, it the is. flower it, itself. It is There's gorgeous. And it's tree. just all everywhere. This yeah, whole vine is covered. So will this take more sun than the than yes. the the yes, clematis the yes. it takes a lot of sun. It doesn't require a lot of water. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's marvelous. This path used to be our fireplace. Hey, how resourceful you are. We got rid of a fireplace that did nothing more than let cold air in the house and made a path. Well, we have our bush poppy here we finally got to grow. This is the island bush poppy. It's not our local California native, but it is a California native. And but it's a challenge. It's is it? A challenge. Is it because of, of the chill factor? No, because a couple of things. One, it doesn't like water in the summertime, and if it gets any, it's just not happy at all. <laughs> it likes sun, but not too much sun, and um, it's been broken off a couple of times. Oh, you know, oh. Since uh, since we planted it, but <laughs> now it's doing great. Because I stepped on it. Yeah. By accident. Oh, so, it say so that. it wasn't deer or rowdy dogs or anything? No, but the deer will eat it. That's what the little fence is yeah. for. Oh, okay. But it, now it's probably beyond deer damage. But, yeah. A little bit. That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Well, well not everything we have is native, but uh, we, could, we like a lot of salvias. Mm -hmm. um, but there's... Uh, Penstemon flowering right there. Oh, that is a gorgeous. What kind of penstemon is that? Oh. No, it's because it's not the margarita bop that I have. It's a much bigger no, penstemon. Um, I, I think I had the tag. Well, that's okay. You don't need to tell me. As long as you're there, I'm maybe you point out the snowdrops. Yeah, we have a snowdrop bush. This is our local native. Um, <laughs> Let me get a close-up of those blossoms. Sky rack. That's lovely. There's a couple more. This one's blooming better back here. Hmm. What's that that I smell? Is that the the it might those? Be the Philadelphus. The Philadelphus has a wonderful smell. Ah. That's the southern white flowering bush here. Okay. Gorgeous. And of course, the uh, carpenteria is in full bloom. This is the uh, um, Siculatum, which is a California buckwheat, which is not in bloom right now, but it, when it is, it's the, probably the best pollinator attractor in the whole yard. Yeah. And it goes all the way through the summer and into the fall, and it's just always a buzz with visitors of all kinds. Mm -hmm. Pretty hardy. This right here, our, our Ceanothus lamonii, it's our California native uh, Ceanothus. And that's just sort of at the end of its blossom yes. period, isn't it? It's nice. It's sort of a, lo a low bush. Is it that is, yeah. yeah. It is. I don't know if you can get that over there, the deer brush. But, uh, oh. That's in full bloom now, too. Yeah. Gorgeous, so airy. The blossoms are just yes. so airy. Popsicles, popsicles. Yeah, uh, this is um, 
uh, Manzanita Nivadensis, pine mat Manzanita, which is a high country Manzanita, and this one's thriving pretty well. It makes a nice ground cover. We have one over here that's not dead, but it's not especially happy about being here in the lower foothills. Oh, just a, a little too warm for it? A or? little salvia I got from uh, John Whittlesey's Lavendula folia. It's one of my favorites. Nice little low growing, but large flowers. That is nice. I like that. I like that. Uh, we've got three different kinds of Lepicina. There's a fence around this one only because I had to transplant it from the backyard and I wanted to give it some support until it took, but it has some nice little flowers on it. This and is not our local. We have our local native. It's not blooming right now. This one is the island Lepicina. Oh, what is it called? Pitcher sage. Oh, okay. That's a little tube for pollinators to get their little heads into. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a few little blue-eyed grass still blooming. Um, let's see. <clears throat> and what's that big, big green thing behind the blue-eyed grass? That is um, another lepicina. This, that's the uh, Hawaiian lepicina. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, fun. And it bloomed. That one is sort of at the end of its bloom, but it normally blooms late summer, early fall. That just is mixed up. <laughs> but the hummingbirds think it's fabulous. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we could go over to the desert garden. Yeah, this isn't blooming yeah. now, but this is Monardella odoratissima, that, that very nice aromatic native mint. Oh. It's got really small leaves for a mint. Mm-hmm. That's lovely. I wish it were blooming because it's a, another bee magnet. A Looking few odds it. and ends of, um, there's the hummingbird sage back there, and then uh, this little salvia in here. It's kind of messy, but. Uh, that's the nicest hummingbird sage that I've seen in a long time. Really? And it always looks a little seedy. I'm, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I always thought it's just something that's just not happy here, but this kind of looks better I, than usual. I think that's just the way they look. Uh, maybe so. It's not flowers, oh. but the... Look at the Fremontodendrum that you've yes, got there. Yes, it's at, right at the end of it. This is a close-up of the flannel blossoms, flannel bush blossoms. Arid lands, and so we made a sandy, well-drained place. I keep trying to get more fertile with leaves falling on it and neighborhood cats using it, but it's still pretty nice. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I guess the most prominent things are... Yeah, right now is the fairy duster. This, <clears throat> the big red one is Mexican fairy duster, the Caliandra. And the little small one here with the pale flowers is the California fairy duster. Great. So do you visit the, the desert often? Every yeah. year, a couple yeah. times if we can. Yep. Is that do you get those from nurseries out there or how do you how do you get these kinds of plants? Well, I, you know we get them from a lot of different places. I think the Caliandras we got seeds uh, from yeah. in Arizona at the uh, Sonoran Desert Museum. Sonoran Desert something. Museum has them mm -hmm. in the Desert Botanic Gardens in Phoenix, mm -hmm. and also Rancho Santa Ana. Yeah, they Botanic Gardens have Nursery often has a lot of plants. Desert plants. And, yeah. Oh, sure. Southern California would would mm -hmm. yeah. so feel comfortable with those desert plants. They grow kind yeah. of slowly, but they're still here. Yeah, there's a little fish hook cactus in that in the oh, rock right mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and right behind it is a prickly poppy, which we'll see in the backyard in bloom. Our little saguaro cactus, which is <laughs> just a little baby right now. This is also a great place to put all those beautiful rock and fossil samples that you bring home and don't yeah. know what else to do with. <laughs> right. So you could do a geology class here in the garden. Um, this so it's sort of a memory garden. Yeah. Also, yeah. of all your trips. Wow, this will be blooming in the fall. It's a in the pea family. It's a dahlia. Has nice purple flowers. Mm. Uh, this is our little Joshua tree, and uh, uh, sulfur-flowered buckwheat, looking great.
great right now. That is. That is looking great. No wonder it's not growing in my yard if it wants to be this dry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the other thing about this is is not so much dry but well drained. Very mm. well drained. Which as you know, uh, natives really prefer well drained. And we even have some coyote uh, melons growing, but they're just starting to come up, so they're not really much to look at right now. But we've had coyote melons. Oh, great. So we should go. Okay. Tell me again what this, whoops, wrong rock. Well, this, this rock here. This is half a billion, over 500 million year old rock that records the impacts of raindrops on a layer of silt and mud that then was covered and eventually hardened into rock and retained the, the little mini crater raindrop prints. Look at this huge white salvia. They've taken half of it out. It's still coming. Yeah. It'd be a terrible flat dirt backyard, muddy all winter and dusty all summer, but we've turned it into a courtyard on each Planting area is different. Over there on the right is primarily designed to be attract pollinators and um, provide Butterfly. habitat Milkweed. for butterflies. Mm -hmm. And then right at the bottom of the steps is our little succulent garden, more open and arid. And then on the left is just nice, not too tall, a lot of buckwheats, flowering plants. Yeah, woolly sunflower, a seaside Kutches. daisy, um, a salvia here. And what are the seasons? This is late spring here now. Mm -hmm. uh, is, will that continue blooming most of the, yes. the summer? Yes, seaside daisy yeah, blooms a couple times a year. Uh, the little buck, the buckwheat's in there. We have that pink flowering buckwheat, and it hasn't sent up a flower stalk yet, but then that'll start blooming. Woolly sunflower... Um, it'll it'll bloom in the spring and then that's the end of it for the year. <coughs> the same for the sulfur flowered buckwheat. But the little purple salvia in the front blooms all summer. Really? Yeah. What a treat. What a treat. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And the little flat coreopsis is just mostly a spring bloomer. There's one cactus in bloom, the orange one down there. Yeah, there's an orange they, one. They don't bloom over long periods, but they're spectacular when they do. The prickly poppies are blooming over there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get a picture of that. This is the woolly sunflower, right? Gosh, it's gorgeous. It's, it's such a nice big mat of it. In the wild, you just see it's just usually well, a stick I, or two. I have to tell you, this is not our native. This is a, it's been chosen for its low stature. Mm -hmm. And what was this one with the little orange flowers again? It's a little Coreopsis. Oh, okay. The salvia, this is Nemorosa. It's called Violet Riot. It's one of the um, UC Davis, what do they call those special plants? That All stars. All star, yeah. Right. It's an all star. Valley all stars? Exactly. Close up of the pollinator they garden. They showed up one day. <laughs> we didn't plant them. We planted oh. them here, but they just showed up in our yard one day. These blue dicks of, so, of some, some sort. Some, yeah, some okay. kind of blue dicks. Yeah. No. Uh, Penstemon, and purple penstemons, and the prickly poppy, and then there's a big salvia in the middle, desert sierra, no, desert silver or something, we got that, harvest festival, John Whittlesey, I think, grew that. Has things. that bloomed yet? Do you know whether what it'll bloom like? It it hasn't bloomed yet. This is it's really the first year. <laughs> I mean, it grew last year, but it's this first year where it's really coming into its own. Um, and there's right in the background, on the other side of the blueberries, is the black sage that's blooming. 
And then, of course, our Buckeyes, which I just love Buckeyes. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of edibles in your yard, too, with these oh, blueberries. Yeah, the compost pile. It doesn't look too good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> these, these Buckeyes are gorgeous. This is a nice place for a Cleveland sage. Just let it go, yeah, I think go I wild. I thought it was Cleveland sage, but John Wilsey told me it looked more like black sage to him. So oh, black I'm sage. Okay. But to just sort of be wild. Mm -hmm. So, oh, it's just a whole big bed of phacelia and poppy. Yeah. Yeah, it's full of bees, and the bumblebees love the phacelia. They're always on them. And and what a nice way to to um, cover this slope without having to constantly yeah. weed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's worked out well. Mm -hmm. Nice color next to the vegetable garden. All the trees. Yeah. Uh, apples, apricots, cherries, pears, nectarines, peaches. I think that's all. Yeah. In here and grapes. And uh, raised beds, all manner of things. Onions, peppers, potatoes, tomatoes, edamame, and then melons, you, squash. Then you have this slope over here on the back. That's all. Yeah. Looks like it's yeah. covered in native it bushes. It has a lot of bacris on it, and spirea, and uh, the buckeye, mm -hmm. some pedosporum. Uh, um, what's that yellow one? Forsythia. Forsythia. Yeah. We just wanted a kind of a buffer because the property line runs right through there. That's the next property. Yeah. <coughs> monkey flower. Bush monkey flower. Honey buckwheat. Poppies. What's that mint over there? That's oh. coyote mint. Coyote mint. Mm, I can smell the mint yeah. right here, and just in the sunshine. And uh, this is desert willow, which isn't a willow, but it's a beautiful mm -hmm. riparian shrub in the arid lands. And the big bush, which doesn't look like much, is quail bush, but it's a fabulous habitat for birds and even browsing animals. It's been there many years. It's always full of birds. More red bud. And this also has that vine same clematis growing up in it. Up in mm -hmm. and this isn't in bloom right now, but it's uh, fuchsia. Right? California fuchsia. Oh, California yes. Fuchsia. Well, this is a mass of California fuchsia. Yeah, if you don't stay after it, it will envelop the world. Yeah. Now, mine at home, I cut it back almost to the ground. Yeah, I do too every couple of years. Oh, just every couple of years, not every year. Lepatina right here. It's not brown here. This is our native spirea. The glass eye. Mm -hmm. Buckeye, buckeye hey, this Bower. Is, this is the Buckeye Bower. Yep. The buckeye Bower. Onto that. Does, does, does that mean that's, is that where the kissing goes on? Everywhere the kissing goes on. <laughs> on the spice bush on the other oh. side, but I don't see any right here. Right oh, there's now. one right there. Right behind this carpenteria. Right there, yeah. Oh, here's the carpenteria, yeah. Also. That's just lovely. Just lovely. This is our, our leafy green Shady streamside 
habitat. Yeah, we have. It's nice all summer. It's always shady and green and mm -hmm. something and, uh, bloom in the spring. Irises. Oh, irises those are gorgeous. They've, yeah, they've, uh, they're about at the end. Also berry. This is a native, local native. It makes a nice hedge. <laughs> um, but you got to keep it under control. But it, it doesn't get very tall, but it's nice dense hedge. So how long have you been working on this garden? How long have you lived at the house? And uh, well, we've been here since 1990. And, you know, just piecemeal here and there. You see something you like, you put it in and see if it works. And if it does, then it stays. And yeah. uh, if not, you try something new. We planted this um, dogwood. Well. Oh yeah, nice, really nice it's shady it's, place. It likes to be an understory tree, I think, better than out in the yes. sun. Yes. Um, what is this lady? Mm -hmm. Yes. Vernifolium? Yeah, but uh, no. Catalina current. Okay. Catalina. Catalina. Uh, I think so. I think, I think so. Yep, that's what it's really? called. Yeah. Uh -huh. Catalina current is the. Oh, that may be a common name, but yeah, that's not the. Um, it has a nice smell. Species name, yeah, it's really great, nice. and it thrives. No, here. you got the name right, right? Ribes by Renifolium. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay, mm. I get it. <clears throat> yeah, this yeah, has done extremely well. And you know, it's, it's it's back. a nice on a bank. It likes a little shade, but um, it makes a nice cover on a bank, or we just turn it back. Go well. So, how much land do you have for for all these big bushes to and well, give them some over space? An acre, yeah, one point one five okay. acres. A lot yeah. of it is in the back and is just sort of wildish. <laughs> it's mow, but we don't plant anything back there. And uh, the adjoining property, for the most part, isn't used. It's in our view. It, Kind of forms a little hillside just on the other side of our place. Yeah. So what, that, this is a native. Uh, Acer nagundo. Yeah, Acer nagundo. Oh yeah. Native riparian maple. Yes. Box elder. We planted that from a cutting that we did in a propagation workshop in yeah, Chico. Yeah, you were there, I think, at a propagation workshop. When coral did native. It out of coral native nursery. No, I oh I don't remember that. Does this creek? run a it lot of the run, year? Yeah, it doesn't run all year. It's just in the spring, but it's, it's we hope right that it's long enough to raise a crop of frogs. frogs. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it is. If you and want, you can isn't. walk down there on those rocks and look into the, it's clear and running down there. Yeah. We're lucky that we've had such late rains this year. So yeah. It's been a, a, a cool and stayed quite a bit longer than it usually does. Down there, not very spectacular, but that whole green patch is made of pipe vine, which is a required plant for um, pipe vine swallowtail butterflies, and we have tons of pipe vine swallowtail butterflies. In fact, I saw some... Uh, I see a, some caterpillars right here. Okay, do you see some? Some right oh, there. Oh yeah, all right, there's some right there. And here's some seed pods hanging. Oh, the seed pods. I guess they're beyond flowers. Oh, yeah, they think. flower very, very early. I don't know if you can see that, Anne. Well, she's no, I'm trying to find these right guys. Okay. And there they are, right there. There's those guys. Okay, now we'll come back up and, and see the... Oh. Oh, very nice. Those are fun seed pods. Oh, here's Beautiful. some more caterpillars right there. Can you see the seed okay. pod? Uh-huh, I can, and the caterpillars. These things come up like a little army. They come up out of the pipe vine, and they go up against their house. When and they're they, finished feeding. <clears throat> and they build their chrysalis on everything from the walls of the house to the clothespins on the line, the broom <laughs> handle, screen door. But they seem to like it here. Yeah, yeah. 
they make a nice ground cover, but they're happier to climb. As you can see, this poor little buckeye is getting mm -hmm. <laughs> completely covered. Um, and they bloom more if they climb and have more seed pods. Great. And then this is a regular willow. What is this? A, a regular a royal willow. willow. In fact, we had a couple of uh, California bays, but for some reason they, they died back and now they're yeah, re-sprouting from the root, but I don't know, I don't know what happened to them. But. Do you have sudden oak death here? Probably no, not. No. Well, it's it's pretty dry. Out. Pretty dry here for that. California grape. Growing wild over there in the olive orchard. <laughs> Almost filled in more than. If I'd known it was going to get that big, I'd have thought maybe we should plant it a little That's further toward the edge of the yard. And it the has holly leaf a cherry. cherry on it after the flowers are finished and that the birds like. Yeah. Big, quite large. It works really well as a, a screen, a place where people might want to. An evergreen mm -hmm. screen and something that requires no care at all. Mm -hmm. Does it? And uh, native roses here. Mm -hmm. Okay, here once again is is the the back decorative area above the vegetable garden. As we transition up with all this beautiful display of flowers, pollinators, and everything up to the bishop's house. Oh. Good. Well, Jim and Katie, I just want to thank you once again for letting us come and, and see this wonderful natural area that you've created out of invasive plants from this. Yeah, we rescued it. You rescued it. Yeah, we do. Um, really appreciate it. And um, this is a great way to, to get your garden when it's a little bit far for people to drive out to visit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Glad to share it. Bye-bye.